Finding potential donors is always a challenge, but the one thing that always seems to come up in conversations is, what do I say during an appointment with a potential major donor? This video is designed to share helpful tips on what to say, what to do, and how to ask during that appointment. I think you'll be glad that you watched and especially glad that you stayed until the end. Well, you've worked hard to get an appointment with a potential major donor. Now you want to do the right things while in the appointment with the major donor. After all, as the saying goes, you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. Here's what's required of you on the appointment. Step number one, the opening. Start off with an appropriate greeting and remember to ask questions and listen more than you talk. Especially in the first appointment, don't come off as a salesperson. You're there first to listen and learn. Don't be afraid to have a pad of paper and a pen to capture notes of things the potential donor says that you can bring up later. If they were referred to you, make sure that you bring up the name of the individual as a reminder to the potential donor. State your purpose for being there. John and Mary Smith suggested that I reach out to you. I'm talking to individuals who are very interested in what is happening in our community, especially as it relates to, and then mention a cause. Our organization is very interested in that cause as well and thought we might want to talk. You may have used that exact phrase or statement to get the appointment originally with the person, but it's never wrong to remind the person again why you wanted to meet. Step number two, research and discovery. Shift the conversation to them by asking open-ended questions. Find out the area of interest, their current passions. Remember to ask what makes you weep and pound the table and look for ways to tie that into your organization's mission later. Step number three, move to the main presentation. Look for ways to share the story of your organization, history and reason for existence, and be sure to include your own story if it directly has ties to your organization. My wife and I both have a history with our organization as we were both greatly impacted while college students. Staff and students involved in, were influential in a true life change for us, and thus we have a story to tell. If you're the same, the potential donor usually is intrigued by that story. If you founded the organization, that's important to know as well. Many potential major donors are business people and entrepreneurs and respect someone who can start a business or organization from scratch. At a minimum, share how you got involved with the organization. I have a colleague who started working for the American Cancer Society soon after her mother got cancer. I've heard similar stories before and they never get old. Share a brief history of why and how the organization was started. Don't do long versions of your story. You may be limited with the time that you have with the person. Use your condensed version. That's going to be best. If your organization was started to solve a problem in society or in a certain person's life or people group, share that as well. The potential donor might not even know that the problem exists. Share your mission and vision and let them know what things you do to solve the problem or strategies, programs, or projects you employ to solve these problems. If you came with a plan to share a program or project, now's the best time to share that, either alone, verbally, or verbally with an aid. And an aid could be a brochure, a pro proposal, a case for support, an iPad, videos. Continue to check back along the way to make sure the person understands all the facts and figures and issues that you're presenting. If the potential donor brought up concerns, interests, or passions earlier in the conversation, this might be a good time to relate back how that ties into your organization. Mr. Jones, you expressed a passion or interest in XYZ. You know, that's one of the hallmarks of our organization. Or, that's why our organization exists, to eradicate that problem. Step number four, the financial appeal. You've shared the problem, made a case for why your organization is the most equipped to solve the problem, and you shared your strategies. Now's the time to see if they're interested in partnering financially in the program or project. If you have done your homework, you should already know what's an appropriate gift size to ask the person. 
Start with a total package cost and see if they're willing to give a gift of XYZ to help cover a portion or all of the cost of that program. If this is their first gift to your organization, it's always best to have a project or program big enough that they aren't expected to cover all or most of the cost of the project. That's too much obligation for a first time gift. But if you don't know what capacity or have a proposed gift amount, you could say, how much of the total cost do you see yourself being able to cover? After the ask has been made, an old adage I learned is, the next person who speaks loses. That might sound a bit harsh, but what it means is that if you presented your facts, let the person decide. If you start to think about it too much, you'll question your decision and start to backtrack. Uh, well, maybe I asked the wrong amount. The potential donor might just be processing the appeal and where the money would come from. If you panic, you might say, you know, um, that amount might be too much. Uh, how about, or actually, um, nah, you wouldn't really want to be bothered by this. I, you know, I'm sorry I even came by at this time and then run out the door. That's the wrong thing to do. Before I get to the most important part, how to handle responses, if you've liked what you heard in this video so far, hit the like button and consider sharing this video with a friend or a colleague. And please subscribe to this channel and join our community of nonprofit leaders trying to take their fundraising to the next level. Step number five, the response. There usually are three responses, yes, no, and maybe. If the person says yes, express appreciation and ask for details about the gift, such as when can I expect to get the gift? How will that gift flow? Single gift, monthly, quarterly, annually? Will that come in a check, credit card, bank transfer? I know after the person says yes, you're excited to get back to your office and share what happened with your colleagues, but don't forget to ask for referrals. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, is there anyone else you know who would be as interested as you are in, in this exciting opportunity? A maybe gift means that they need a little more time to process and think about it. That's not a bad thing as it isn't a no. It might also mean that they want to give an amount that's larger and doesn't warrant a quick response, that they need to figure out how to find that. Find out when you can call them to get an answer and never leave this open-ended or in their court. Say something like, well, I know you'd like to call me, but I'm really, really hard to reach these days. Can I call you on Thursday at 10 a.m.? Or is there a better time to call? A no response might not be bad. A no might mean not now. If so, find out when would be a good time to check back with them, six months, a year from now. But it might mean that they simply aren't interested at all. For all no responses, express appreciation for their time and consideration. If appropriate, ask for referrals. It might give them a win by feeling like they're at, they've at least helped you in some way. But don't take that as a value judgment on you as a person. It could be that they're just not in the right financial state. It could mean that this is just not something that's a passion to them. It may not have anything to do with you or the way you present it. Just know that. Here's a few other helpful tips to include. Be sure to arrive early for an appointment, except at a home. Dress appropriately. It's always easier to dress down than it is to dress up. That could include a jacket and a tie, and you could take the jacket off. It could also include a jacket with a pantsuit. That could be taken off as well, too, for a more casual feel. Number three, listen and ask questions. Don't ever monopolize the conversation. Number four, stay on subject. Don't get into any rabbit trails. Honor the time allotted, even if it means ending before you're done. Oftentimes, the person will allow you to continue if your message is compelling. I hope this process was made a little less painful and that you've built some confidence that you can do this because you can. Just step out there and listen, learn, and propose opportunities and wait for a response. It's that easy. Be yourself. As I stated earlier, the objective of this channel is to help you greatly increase your income for your nonprofit organization. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and be sure to click the bell to be notified immediately of the next release. 
Also, post a comment below if there were things you especially liked and if there were topics that you'd like me to address in future videos. For videos similar to this, check out the video or playlist listed above. To watch other videos related to nonprofit fundraising, go out to our channel, Development Effectiveness Strategies. If you have fundraising questions, then our weekly Jim and Java program is for you. Submit your questions on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.